And welcome to another episode of Transparent Physics in which we are discussing uh, math problems associated with uniform circular motion moving in circles. We have a level two problem here where we're looking at a hammer toss. Um, I do apologize, this one is actually already written out. Um, I actually just solved it out right now um, on video, but the video didn't take. So uh, you're just gonna have to see the work that I did and we'll just pretend that I'm working it out with you guys right now. But you know what, a cup of tea makes everything better. Uh, let's take a look here. So this problem is a little more complicated. I would consider this to be a, you know, a mid-level problem as far as the test goes. If you're uh, in an introductory level physics course, if you can solve this one, you're in pretty good shape for general level problems. Uh, there's definitely harder ones that they can get thrown at you. So you can see here, I already <laughs> underlined everything from the last video uh, take on this one. But in the women's hammer throw, we have a four kilogram mass attached to a 1.19 meter long cable with a handle. Uh, as of the recording of this video, the world record holder is Anita Wodarczyk. Uh, she's from Poland. Uh, she's widely considered to be the greatest women's hammer thrower in the history of the world. And I did watch uh, a couple of videos uh, of her in uh, composing this problem. And uh, the hammer toss is quite an interesting event to watch. You should, it's a lot of physics. So after this, you should check it out. Um, so I, I'm just working some general numbers out here. Uh, but let's say that she is exerting a force of 2,750 newtons, centripetal force pulling inward on the cable. And we're going to assume she's spinning it with a constant speed. Now, this is not a realistic hammer throw problem in the actual hammer throw event. As you spin, you're speeding up with every turn. So you might get three or four or maybe five turns in, uh, and then you release the cable and the, and, the, and the mass goes flying through the air. So this is an unrealistic problem because you wouldn't ever be spinning it in a constant speed. But we are interested in solving for that speed, and we're interested for the amount of time it takes to complete one full revolution. Um, one full rev the time it takes to complete one full revolution is a period, capital T. So they don't actually say solve for the period, but you should infer it from the information that's provided. All right. And uh, with us again now, your loss is my gain because I get my quip snacks again because you guys didn't see me eat them last time. So let's take a look here. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, well, we've read the question and we've underlined it already. So those were both uh, already accomplished pretty much off camera for us. Uh, but we've got it, we've got the initial information sort of underlined and things that we're solving for as well. So I can get some snacks right away here. So for questions, that's right, smile. It's never as bad as you think it's gonna be. Smile, smile, smear, smear, smile, we'll say smile. Nom, 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 nom. And underline. Uh, only you. Only mute. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. All right. Let's take a look here. So, we actually are in the information phase already. Information phase, we take the information that we're given, consolidate it. So I drew a sketch. The sketch has the person spinning the mass in a circle, radius 1.19 meters. Now, in drawing the sketch, I realized when I get, wrote the problem, I, the, the length of the chain is officially 1.19 meters. In a more realistic take on this problem, that would actually not be the radius of the circle because the radius of the circle would have to include the person's arms as well. But for the sake of this problem, we'll just assume that was the correct radius to begin with. We know the mass and uh, there's a force pulling inward uh, that I labeled as FC for centripetal force. And uh, we've got that ma uh, the, uh, the value of that force as well. We also list the two variables we're solving for. We are interested in the speed and the time now officially actually i'm kind of glad that we look at this because it does say the time but it's the time to complete one full revolution so actually looking at the way i solved it last time i really shouldn't have lowercase t there 
I should actually have uppercase T. So, uh, capital T. That's really what we're interested in. We're interested in the period, not some general time. So, haha, -ha, I guess it all happens for a reason. Okay, we've got all that information in there. That is our information phase complete. And time for a snack. Call me. Huh? Fair enough. All right. All right. Next up, we set up the procedure. Now, I, I won't be able to separate really my procedures from my solutions here because they're all kind of mixed together, but we'll see what we can do here. So, in setting up my solution, uh, first thing I'm going to do is take a look at the tools that I have available. So, across the top of my paper, now you don't have to do this obviously, depending on your resources. I wrote the basic equations that we're going to be looking at. We've got V equals 2 pi R over T, AC equals V squared over R, AC equals 4 pi squared R over T squared, and just the general equation FC equals MAC. So some combination of these we'll use throughout the problem. It's just nice to have them there handy, ready to go to begin with. All right, so now to start, I am interested in the speed. Now, if you notice, the speed appears in two equations. AC is V squared over R, and V is 2 pi R over T. Now, we actually um, don't know the T, and we don't know AC. So, even though we have two equations that have speed in them, there's none of them that we can solve in one step. Now, the fact that they gave us the force it's a pretty good indication that we might be using this equation over here. And, uh, you know, like I say, sometimes uh, if you don't know what you should do, do what you can do. So we can't actually solve for the speed right now, but we could actually figure out the centripetal acceleration. So centripetal acceleration, we could figure that guy out. We know the force and we know the mass. And then once we know the centripetal acceleration, we could use the centripetal acceleration uh, and the radius to solve for the speed. So this is our ultimate goal, but we need to get the acceleration first to get there. So we set up the problem. We plug in our force divided by our mass. If you notice the way I set this up, when I wrote the force, I did not write it as a Newton. I wrote it as kilogram meters per second squared. When you expand it out to its base units, I can see the kilograms cancel with kilograms, leaves me with the unit that I'm interested in, and I know then at least the equation manipulation is on the right track. When you plug into the calculator, uh, 2,750 divided by 4 gets us around 688. Um, I'm not being super precise with the significant digits. Technically, dividing by two significant digits should give me two significant digits for my answer. So really, I should round that to 690. All right. So armed with that information, we can go ahead and continue to manipulate this equation in the next step. We have AC is V squared over R, V squared equals AC over R, and then manipulate to solve for V. V is square root of AC over R. Plug, chug, and we get our final answer here. So that is the speed that she is throwing or spinning the hammer at at that moment in the problem. Again, in a real hammer toss, she's not going to have a uniform circular motion, but for this problem, we assume that she does. Okay, so that's part A. We're not done. We are also interested in the time that it takes to complete one full revolution, which is the period. So looking at these equations, we have two equations that involve the period. We have V equals 2 pi over T, and we have AC is 4 pi squared R over T squared. So each of those we could use to solve for the period. I think it's a pretty clear pick. Uh, when all things are considered equal, uh, we would be choosing the simpler equation to manipulate. So if we take a look here, uh, we have the initial equation, which was V equals 2 pi R over T. I already started manipulating it. Multiply both sets by T to get T out of the basement. Again, that doesn't necessarily seem like that's going to make progress for us, but it does make um, our lives easier because now we can get T by itself by moving V over to the other side. And it 
looks like that is our manipulated equation. So we're basically ready to go, which means I can eat the next piece of candy. Who's got the procedure down? Love you. Aww. You know what? I love Mew too. Um, so, and it never hurts once you manipulate an equation to make sure the units are going to work out. We have radius over speed. Radius is meters, speed is meters per second. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So meters stays meters. Divided by meters per second becomes seconds over meters. Meters cancel with meters, leaves us with seconds. So we're ready to plug, chug, and get our answer. And when it's all said and done, that the period is around 0.26 seconds. What that means is that if she's spinning the hammer at that speed, at that radius, yeah, she'll complete a circle about once every quarter of a second. And that is the second problem in this set. Um, definitely more challenging than the first, especially part A, because part A you had to sort of do a two-step problem at once to get where you needed to be, but as long as you just sort of stay the course and follow the equations, you'll be in good shape. All right, apologies again that you did not get a chance to see that one worked out live, but uh, hey, we caught a mistake second time through, so uh, good for me, because you guys probably would have seen it anyway if I would have went and posted that live. So we're all done with our solution. Boom, boom, boom. How close can I go? Oh, that's as big as I can get. So I love solutions too. So now that we're done, only you, only you can make um, hangs of All right. Hey, thanks for uh, watching another episode of Transfers and Fit. Mm. Finishing up that candy heart. We'll start again. Thanks for watching another episode of Transparent Physics. I hope we've had a chance to make things a little clearer for you.